She awakens each day early to walk the streets of Nuevo Progreso, where she competes with other child vendors of watches, silver bracelets, CDs of Tejano music. Poets have always been interested in art, and there's actually a classical term to define this relationship between poetry and art, which is called ekphrasis. When I was at Syracuse as an undergraduate, I studied with W.D. Snodgrass, who had won the Pulitzer Prize, and he had done a series of poems about famous impressionistic paintings, including The Starry Night by Van Gogh. I think my hearing him read those poems and seeing the paintings had a big influence upon me. And so when my wife started to do these drawings and paintings, as a writer, my response was to write poems about the figures in her work. I stand with these beaded necklaces outside La Fogata each Saturday afternoon, laughing. I like to listen to the young children sitting on the curb with their accordions playing in the sunlight for shiny dimes. The tourists from El Otro Lado toss into paper cups. This particular project, Borderlines, Growing Border Lives, is especially important to me because it's a collaboration between my work and my wife's work. When I go to paint, I'm responding to each subject. For an artist, the elements of design are essentially our words. And I chose this little boy because I wanted to respond to the sadness in his eyes, which I, I couldn't even paint as sad as he really was. I couldn't let myself because it would be too sad a painting. With him, I chose to have this kind of dark, ponderous kind of value scheme. It's, it's not like his little sister, where she just has a few dark spots um, against the same color paper, this kind of mid-value green paper. But he's like in a Rembrandt painting. He's light against the darkness that's surrounding him. She has these little points of color. I put them in there to remind you that she's a little girl, but she has to live such a serious life so young because the economics of where she lives. They see the art of themselves on the wall. It's different than going to museums and always seeing art about something other than yourself. So it's a way of honoring the people of the valley. The very last poem in the book is called Disappeared. It was inspired by a portrait my wife did of a woman at a mass for the disappeared in Guatemala. The poem is simply called, Disappeared. Disappeared into thin air. Disappeared into black night. Disappeared in broad daylight. Disappeared. Disappeared for wearing a Star of David. Disappeared for wearing a cross. Disappeared for belonging to a union. Disappeared. Disappeared in Chile disappeared in Guatemala, disappeared in El Salvador, disappeared from Ciudad Juarez, disappeared from Equiladores, disappeared from the face of the earth, disappeared. These border portraits caught my eye when I first saw them at the University of Texas Pan American, and they draw me in even now. Ordinary folks rendered with love, compassion, and intimacy at a time in history when love, compassion, and intimacy are in short supply on borders, especially when it comes to the Tex-Mex border. Hooray for Steve and Rivka and the magical work they are doing crossing fronteras. Hooray for Wings Press for publishing this celebratory book when we need it most. Hey, Vivan. Borderlines is a true marriage. Poetry and art, English and Spanish, north and south of the border. I'm telling you, such a kiss is this book that you oftentimes cannot tell which came first, the poem, its translation, or the artwork. Que besito es este libro.